Hey, hello everybody. Good evening, good afternoon. Uh, <laughs> depending on your time zone, depending on where you are together. Uh, uh, today we are together with uh, Scott Neville from Microsoft. It's my privilege to have him today. Uh, Scott is going to walk us through some data related stuff in Dataverse from a Power BI perspective. I'll keep it short. Please take it over from here, Scott. Thank you for joining me today. Certainly. Well, good. Well, th uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, looking forward to having a conversation about really this the strength of when we bring Power BI into Dataverse or Dataverse into Power BI, however your perspective is, uh, because the combination of those is really an accelerant on the Power Platform. Um, and, uh, it, it, and I think I'm going to show you some things that will uh, – be exciting and, and enlightening to how that you can take, use these tools together to really show off the value of the work that you're doing in the Power Platform to your customers or to your organization that you're working on. So let me introduce myself. My name is Scott Sewell. Uh, I started implementing the Power Platform in its earliest stage as CRM 1.0 uh, in 2003. In January 2003, so that would have been uh, 20 years ago uh, last in January. So uh, that's a, a lot of the gray hair comes from that um, as a result of that. But over the time, I kept seeing this power, this platform grow and become more and more capable of solving just the the real everyday problems that businesses had to solve. You know, there are some big esoteric giant problems that's not really designed for that but there are some real fundamental everyday pro, uh, challenges that customers deal with that um they this is a real great is a great way of solving those problems and un getting unstuck and moving forward the projects that uh, the customers have and through that process also i kept finding you know that there was a this platform is gaining more and more data. Let me go ahead and share my screen while I'm, while I'm chatting away here. Uh, the platform is gaining more and more data through the process. And as it gained data, the, the basic out-of-the-box reports inside of Dataverse were, were really designed for the, the end user, the, the, the person who's looking at my opportunities or my service cases or you know my accounts those are those are the types of things that dataverse is built in out of the box reports and dashboards really served very well but when you started saying i need to aggregate a bunch of data up and really trying to summarize and find insights off of that data um those the tools built into dataverse were just not really designed for that in mind that's where power bi or the precursor the power pivots and the uh, power query when those became started becoming uh, available to us i started using those myself as a dynamics implementer or a dataverse implementer to say hey here's the here's what all this work that we're doing to get this project underway or to build the adoption of this project here's where all that all that effort is going and here's the results of it and i would show i would bring the data out of dataverse into um into these power bi reports or uh, and summarize it and show it to the business decision makers. And suddenly we were feeding into the the requirements that they had, not just the people who were doing the front end key key uh, key logging the entries. Um, we were actually feeding into the the uh, the organization's goals. Um, and I found that that was just a really powerful way to show off uh, the strength of these projects we were working on. And so I personally, you know, kind of, I was I was also uh, personally I had a lot of I had a lot of fun working on the data of things that were going on, and uh, I spent a lot of time on data imports and data exports and integration work. That was kind of my area that I was excited about, uh, and I had a skills around. So when it moved into reporting, that was a really natural place for me to be. So over time, I saw Power BI and Dataverse as being these really strong independent projects that were going on, uh, the, the strong products that Microsoft was providing into this platform. 
And yet I only saw a very small overlap. The Venn diagram between the two was pretty, pretty small. A couple of reasons for that. One is the analytics, you know, the stream of people working in analytics aren't typically the ones that are working on um, business application perspective, not uh, at least historically. And the people who are working on the business application side really already had a, a dashboard solution that was kind of focused on what they were thinking about and what was right in front of them. But over time, I kept saying, look, you know, th- these things really ought to be more complementary to each other. And uh, over time, I, gra- I, you know, about five years ago, I joined Microsoft. And my goal has been to help move these two together and build a stronger uh, dynamic between the two so that more people on the the Dataverse or, you know, the business apps side of things say, hey, yeah, this Power BI thing is really helpful to us to help us achieve our goals. And on the other side, the Power BI teams, uh, the users from there, when they go into an organization and they're looking at what are the systems that they can pull data from, Dataverse is quite often one of those systems. And there should be a, a, a natural affinity that says, hey, I can take advantage of pulling the data from that to help enrich the, the solutions we provide to our end users. So I'm, I'm really focused on that, that intersection between the two uh, and trying to build that, that bridge. And we've done a lot of work over the last um, three years, I would say, to make it a much more, a much easier process. I mean, they still are different mindsets in some ways between the two. Um, the analytics modeling and the dataverse modeling is is still different, uh, but that's kind of intentional uh, because we're trying to build for the right the right use case. But but the integration, a lot of the friction has come out of that, and a lot of the friction has been um, smoothed out by some uh, some enhancements we've added to it. Um, and so again, if you tried integrating dataverse with Power BI a year ago, even six months ago, and I, I dare say even a month ago. Uh, I, I think I have some things that I can share with you that will help improve and um, and make that a much more valuable tool for you in that process. So let's talk about value. Let's talk about why we bring these two together. Um, in my From my perspective, if you're a Dataverse or a, uh, and I, by the way, I'm going to use Dataverse kind of, I'm going to keep referring to Dataverse because that is the data platform that sits underneath the um, model-driven apps and um, Dynamics 365 CE, and, you know, the sales service, project service. A lot of f and transactions are going to start flowing in and be available through the Dataverse perspective. So I'm really going to kind of use Dataverse because that is the data layer that sits underneath those applications. Um, and I also kind of lean towards using that terminology. But as we look at these apps, we want to be able to see that we're showing value to the people around us. And the 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 most expensive piece of software is the one that you spend all the money to implement and then it sits on the shelf and nobody uses it. Um, that's a, that's a, you know, zero return on investment, but what we can do by saying, let's give it your users, the managers, the owners, uh, a, a much richer view of what's going on in the organization give them that promise 300. We've been promising a 360 degree view for well, 20 plus years. And, uh, I think with power BI, we really have a chance to start pulling data from around the world, around the uh, organization into, and making th- dynamics this uh, really cr- crisp view of what's going on. We don't have to worry about the th- the 50k row limits that the out of the box dashboards. They are designed with that 50k limit because they are focused on those kind of end user goals. Uh, we can also combine data from outside of Dataverse into the, our reports very easily and build in intelligence uh, over that data. Within the contextual side. We can look, we'll, and we'll take a look at exactly these things. Uh, we can see that three issues to review within an individual record. So if I go to the uh, Fabricam record, uh, the corporate Fabricam record in inside my uh, Dynamics environment, I can open it up and see the data that's sitting in Dataverse or Dynamics 365, combined with a Power BI report that pulls that data plus data from other unrelated systems 
into that report, giving them giving me a much bigger context of what's going on. Uh, and ultimately, it's driving adoption, which is what we want to make sure we, we, we're we doing. So I'm going to talk about several perspectives on this and several challenges, and, and I'm going to talk about what we have available today. And I've got some ideas or some uh, some hints on what's coming uh, in this process. And I think those will be, those will be valuable to you as we get, get forward into it. So let's talk about integration choices. Uh, what are the choices? And this is probably, um, I've got them as slides, but I'm, I'm happy to just pull them up as uh, dashboards. So let me start with a, uh, let me start with my demo environment here. I'm back to Contoso sales demo. Um, so this is an example of, you know, Dynamics 365, uh, just my regular accounts, that I have in the, my environment, but I've gone ahead and pinned in a dashboard. And this is a Power BI dashboard surfaced inside of Dynamics as a uh, a report there for me to interact with. Um, and so by seeing this dashboard in here, I can see, of course, data, like I said, data from Dynamics pulled in, but this can also be supplemented and enriched with data from outside of Dynamics. Uh, data related to say to inventory or shipping or uh, quality customer service data, all those data um, or even like um, if you're doing qual metrics or doing some sort of a customer surveys, all that data can be enriched and you can start providing this clean perspective that says here's the uh, here's the big picture of what's going on uh, within our organization and really help drive the business forward. You know, within the reports, it's it's the very standard things that you can do with most reports. So you can highlight a, a manager or an individual, in this case, in this case, a team, or I can highlight, you know, Jeff and see what Jeff's working on or Carlos. Um, and within that, I can, you know, jump to a particular area. Like in this case, we could click on California and say, what's what's going on in California? And we see the rest of the report filtering to reflect that. So it's that that interactivity is very important and very useful to us. Other aspects of it are just the way to take visuals, not just where I say, let me bet a, a bar chart within this, but I can hover over it and show a um, a, a KPI, I mean, a pop-up uh, tool tip that gives me more detail about that particular uh, individual. And for this case, Alicia Thromber's uh, revenue, she's got an open opportunity of $910,000 out there. That's just a, a visual of what's going on as well as moving data in and, and, and transacting that way. So we can also, you know, maybe change it and say, I'd rather see it as a bar chart um, or as a, as a bubble chart over time and see how these different organizations have taken, how the, the teams have operated over time and see what that looks like. Uh, within that, I even I can drill into it and say, I want to drill into Dan Jump here as a manager and say, what's Dan's team working on? And there's Carlos and there's uh, Alicia, and I can see all that detail. Or I can drill up and maybe look at it instead of looking at it from the uh, the individuals, I might want to look at it from a sale a marketing campaign. Like in this case, we have um, just one, one campaign, the advertisement campaigns, but I can drill down into that. I can see the different marketing campaigns that went out under that header and see what, what they're working on and which ones are providing value to us. But it's that interactivity that gives us the ability to really start giving visibility to the data that's sitting in dynamics to be able to understand it better. Um, other aspects of the way we can interact with the data are things like we're seeing month over month change. How What's the month over month a change in percentages of opportunities being created or the opportunities being won uh, or revenue that's being won. What's the change month over month um, or over time, as well as looking at it again as different visuals within that. But that's all taking the data and then visualizing it, starting to consume it in that perspective. But what we might want to do is then use part of this, basically the, the fact that this is part of the power platform is incredibly valuable to each of us as we want to take advantage of that natural integration that takes place. In this case, I might have a handful of users, only let me highlight a few users, who aren't quite selling the selling the data, uh, excuse me, selling their deals as 
effectively as maybe others are are selling it. So I could highlight a few and I could say, well, let me, you know, Alan and Ann and uh, Molly, you're still doing okay, but these uh, these five or so, I'm going to focus on getting some additional support for them. So what I've done is, again, I've taken data from Dynamics, I've summarized it and found a measure that I want to work on, in this case, the closing percentage. Once I've visualized that into my report, I can select within that, I can select individuals who need additional assistance and take action on them by using the embedded power automate button. And what, 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 when I press the power automate, it takes this filtered list that I've set up over here on the right. That filtered list gets passed over to a power automate. And on the other end, it could be whatever whatever power automate wants you want to set it up to. Are you going to send them an email? Are you going to send them, enroll them into a, a training program? Are you going to send a, um, you know, Anything that you want to do from Power Automate standpoint, it's just the reality of we're taking a data, summarizing it, selecting it, and then taking action on that. And that action pure piece is really that completion of the cycle within the Power Automate or the uh, the Power Platform, which is really powerful. Um, other pieces within this that help us tie together dynamics, and I'm going to show you a little bit more about how we do all this in a moment, but I want to kind of give you the context to what we're talking about. The other pieces we talk we can talk about is if we went in to drill into an uh, a, an industry, expand that out. So we have a few people in that industry that we want to have some conversations on. Uh, maybe I'll pick a different industry, one that has a few more uh, opportunities in it. So maybe agriculture. Yeah. So there's Fabricam, good old Fabricam. So Fabricam has some revenue uh, one, some open, and three open opportunities. I can. Just highlighting it, I've got a tool tip that says, shows me what's going on with Fabricam, but I might want to be, might have more interest in what's going on with Fabricam. I can drill through to a customer detail record for Fabricam, and I can see the details of what Fabricam is working on. Uh, I can see three, deals, three uh, opportunities for Shanjay, and maybe I can even click from here up into the Fabricam record in Dynamics so that I can see Fabricam in all its glory. Uh, let's load it up here. So Fabricam is an agricultural producer in Tennessee. Uh, Sanjay is the owner. And here's the background on what's, what Fabricam is doing. And over on the right, you're seeing the report, the same report loading up with the details about what Fabricam is doing. And again, this could be data from Dataverse. It could be data from Dataverse combined with data from outside, or it can be completely all data from outside of Dataverse. Uh, but we're just showing it in a in a Power BI report, which we could then share, um, or we could uh, export. Obviously, everybody love, loves the export to Excel or send it out as a PowerPoint or PDF or whatever we want to do from it from there. So really that embedding uh, ability Embedding, embedding within context of the record I'm on. So I'm on Fabricam, so it's filtering to Fabricam. If I looked at another account, maybe um, let's see what we have out here. Uh, there's Fabricam. Let's look at AdventureWorks. It's a, a small organization. AdventureWorks has the same thing, and as soon as I open up the AdventureWorks account record, it passes that information over and filters this embedded report to AdventureWorks. So really, really valuable in those perspectives on that, in that side. Let's go back to the report we have, and let's look at a couple other items that I want to highlight, and then we'll get a little bit under the covers and talk about how they're, how they're built and what we, what we talk about within it. Trend analytics is really using the ability of these tools to um, look for trends or, or forecast futures. Uh, in this case, I, this is my sample data. It doesn't have re really enough data in it to build a forecast off of. But I could, if I have enough data, I can push a forecast forward from that. Or I can look at anomaly data. Like in this case, there's an unusual event on this particular day. Uh, on October 6th, we could say that we had an unusually high amount of sales that day. Well, what is the possible understanding of what what understanding or assumptions can we drive out of that? And we found out that we had unusually high for business services and uh, the ad ca the um, uh, ad campaign was, uh, let's see which ad campaign it was. Um, yeah, so uh, campaign template was there, was high. So it was just a, 
an interesting opportunity there. Or we can look at uh, influencers. Uh, let's look at decomp here. I think you should see us. So we have 350 opportunities. Uh, maybe we want to look at the, instead of the territory, let's break that out to, um, managers and from within managers, let's break it out into, um, the owners and we can just keep breaking this data out so we can see the data as it exists and where, what is it? How do you break that down into the different uh, sub components within that. There's Julian, there's Renee. We can see what's going on within those. So again, very much a, a, a clean way of understanding what's going on in those records. We can even go from another perspective, maybe if I'm on a sales, on a sales opportunity or a sales deal, I have some people that are out there and here's some sample users. Let me look at just users that have opportunities. Let's see who's out here. So there's a Alicia is a has an op, has opportunities. So I can click on Alicia's name, and again I've done the same thing here, where I've gone to the user record and and baked into that user record a Power BI report that helps me as a manager, for instance, to have an an intelligent conversation with Alicia if I'm helping Alicia uh, improve Alicia's uh, effectiveness and whatever we're whatever we're measuring on. In this case, I've got the opportunities of what the history is for Alicia, as well as even the customers that Alicia has open opportunities. And I can even drill from here to the specific opportunity that I want to have a conversation about. Let's look at this opportunity. It's a $910,000 opportunity for, um, uh, let's see, who's our customer? Our customer is Humongous Insurance. Uh, but I can drill in all the way into that and have that good conversation so I can help Alicia achieve her goals and I can help the organization achieve its goals. Uh, so really strong from that perspective. But another way in which we can do this now, let me go to my opportunity list. And I can see um, all my opportunities. Let's look at, yeah, this is an easy enough one. But if you'll notice that this is just a, a standard uh, Dataverse dynamic CRM view, um, and I've got 366 records in here. But now we've added uh, in the last uh, last quarter or so, we've added the visualize this view. This is a what we call a quick report. It's a quick automated creation of a Power BI report over the existing view. So I'll click visualize this view, and it will launch and start running against the view and whatever filters you have on it, as well as whichever columns you've chosen for that view. And it will do its best to create a report for us in that view. Now, it's not fast. It's gonna take it a second to load that because it's actually generating a report based on the data set and then deciding what are the possible, what are possible or suggested items that you might want to use to visualize. So we'll see if it uh, loads. I probably should have warmed it up. There it is. Okay, now it's come up, and this is a report that I have. I've all I've done is made one click, and it and it loaded for us. Uh, and I can see the data based on pipeline phase or status. Uh, maybe I'll just say I'm only interested in the open opportunity, so I can click on open, and the rest of the report's going to filter accordingly to show me just the open opportunities, even including the. Uh, the narrative down below, the smart narrative cases below. Um, if I if I want to change something different, say, you know what, I don't want to see it by pipeline phase. I want to see the sum of estimated revenue by, uh, let's look at um, owner. Change that. Now I can see the owners listed as the terror as the 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 axi. Uh, here I might want to see this instead of by pi uh, sum of rev revenue. I might want to see the uh, count of opportunities out there within the pi pipeline phase. And I really want to see it instead of a cluster bar chart, I want to see it as a, um, a funnel chart. So I can make those changes on the fly and I could then save this and save it out to my Power BI, my own Power BI workspace and, and reuse this later if I wish. So this is the quick report um, and that's that's all available through the 
the visualize this view. And again, you're running it as an individual. So you only need, a, I think, at the minimum, a, a free, quote unquote, free license for you to be able to see it for yourself. Now, if you wanted to then share that and take it and, and share, uh, paste it out or uh, expose it to the rest of the organization, you'd need to go into more licensing questions at that point. But I wanted to kind of vi help you introduce that to you if you hadn't seen that already, uh, that that's available to you now. So let's take a look uh, at a at a deeper level. I'm going to let me move forward just a second in my uh, decks. We've talked about displaying it in a dashboard. We've talked about um, embedding it in the report into a form, uh, quick reports. Uh, but the the difference now, one of the things that's happening is there is now a the solution integration of reports has become much more tighter. It used to be that Power BI and Dataverse reports, uh, excuse me, Dataverse and Power BI reports kind of like floating on their own and you had to, as you move it to one organization, one entity to the next or one uh, from dev to prod to test or to, you know, whatever, wherever you want to move it, you would have to move those independently of each other. And each time you move it to a new org, uh, new environment or a new, you know, uh, org, you would need to reconnect all the dots. But what's happened is we've added in here the ability to bring those in as solutions. So here's an example of my Contoso sales solution. And inside the solution, I have, uh, and this solution is available to you if you want. It's on my GitHub. I'll show you a link. I'll share a link to it later. Um, I can embed in here, not just the, uh, the old style was just, it was an, you would notice that there was a, uh, it would say Power BI embedded. And all that was, was just a hyperlink. Basically, it was just a pointer to say, point to a dashboard that's outside. And it was just a, Basically, URL is really all it was, all it was, but it knew what it was. It would say, "Here's a URL." But now we actually have the um, the data sets and the reports being imported into into the solution. So I can take this this solution and import it into a brand new organization, and suddenly it's going to deploy the Power BI. It's going to report uh, the the solution. It's going to uh, bake it into the forms. It's going to put it all in place. Now it's much more of a complete process of what's going on. So it's really a, a powerful way to move um, and to manage that application lifestyle management process that uh, that's so important as you're dealing with it as a, a on the internal organizations or if you're dealing with it as a, a consultant to an organization, you can actually bake these up and and push them over and they they roll out. What they do just as an FYI, I don't know if you've seen this, um, just as an FYI, it does open a, set up a, a connection to a new workspace in Power BI. So if I clicked on open in Power BI here, it's going to open up Power BI and um, I'm sure I can log in. And it's creating a new solutions um workspace is called solutions and then the name of the organization that it's coming from which is my test organization and it creates this one and it's automatically managed by power apps and those are the environment those are the reports that are in there um, and the only thing you typically need to do is go in and set the uh, uh, set the permissions on the the credentials you just click edit credentials and say sign in and then that's enough to get you off and running that gives you connections back to so that the the Power BI reports can refresh the data off of dataverse um, so that's an that's relatively new uh, that also allows us to go forward into adding the into the report excuse me into the uh, the forms like in this case I've got the account with Power BI embedded that's the one we saw a moment ago where I showed Fabricam and it had Fabricam's uh, Dataverse information, as well as a baked-in Power BI report. That's now how we do this, because this now has, um, this is now aware of those reports that have been brought into the solution. It knows how to embed those into the, into the form. Like in this case, I can go to this Power BI form, and it's a component. If I click on this and click edit, you'll see that I have 
I can select which form, which Power BI report I want to show inside this form. Uh, I'm choosing the customer because that's one that's there. And I can say whether I want to show the, the filter panes on the right, uh, if I want them hidden or closed by, def by default. Um, I can even have filter updates. If it's a report that has that pulls in a lot of data from a lot of different things, and maybe you're only focused on um, the shipping cost. I don't know. I'm just trying to make up something on the fly. You could actually filter, uh, apply a filter to the report to say, I'm only interested in the, the widgets and the report's going to filter to widgets. And then as I move off of it, it'll save that filter for me so that when I open up that report again, it's going to it's going to be still showing a filter applied of widgets. So very helpful for users who have interest in just a slice of what the data is in there. The action bar is that, that ab ability to do the export from or subscribe. Uh, and then down below it, there is a filter uh, schema that we put in there and I can show you how that's, that's done. You just apply a JSON filter to it that says, take the GUID of the record I'm on and pass this to the report so that the report can be filtered in context of the record I'm looking at. So very helpful in that perspective. Um, but that's, that's all fairly new. Um, and I, I encourage you to check it out and take advantage of that. It does allow for one click imports and all. I do have the documentation and blogs, et cetera, webinar on it uh, in the presentation. I'll give you a link to this presentation so you can have the whole thing uh, as as a, a start. But uh, let me pause. But I'm gonna, the next piece I want to talk about is how how do we move data out of Dataverse into Power BI? What are the choices and what are the ups and downs of those? That'll be the next thing we talk about. But I want to pause for a second and ask if there's questions or if there's anything in the chat that I need to be aware of outside of this, what we're talking about so far. And then um, any questions so far? Okay. Well, if there is none, I'm going to ask a question. Uh, the, the, yeah. the, the report design, when you click the visualize this view. Yes. My question is regarding that uh, re reports design. Mm -hmm. Is it something you have done before or it's no, just uh, created by the system uh, on, it, on the fly. It's just created by the system. Okay. Yeah. So it does know. not, there's no, um, for good or for bad, it, you know, the, you, you're not feeding it a template or anything like that. It just creates it um, based on the data that it sees. Um, yeah. So now I would say that these are probably designed for data sets that are in the, you know, a few thousand records, not million of records, right? Not hundreds of thousands, but you know, a few thousand records that that's kind of appropriate for these types of views. And, and by the way, it is doing it based on your, your security credentials. So that if there are opportunities that you're not allowed to see, um, if you, if you're, uh, I see the question comes in on RLS, right? So if the question is, do I, um, if I can't, if I'm not only allowed to see my opportunities, if I'm a, a sales user and the only opportunities I'm allowed to see are the ones that I'm working on, the visualize this view is only going to show me those, those opportunities. Um, so it's just going to use it direct query from that perspective. So that's, that's part of the reason why the, the data set's probably not uh, a, a bigger report. So, Liam, I see the question for uh, RLS's work if the Power BI is embedded in the form. Yes. Um, RLS, Power BI RLS is going to um, is going to be applied anytime you see the Power BI report if you've applied Power, Power BI RLS. Now, let's be thought, let's be careful in the RLS conversation. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment in terms of security from Dataverse to Power BI and back and how you deal with that. Uh, so we want to be, be thoughtful about our, our terminology here, but I'll, that's probably worth just going in and jumping in on this, this conversation. So how do we get data into the report? We've got several options, um, and I'm going to talk about three of the four options. The fourth one would be the data marks, and it's a still preview, and I've got, still got some questions I need to work out on uh, on where it fits into the picture. But the, pr the first option is this direct query approach where 
Power BI just has a uh, a layout of visuals and queries for that, but it doesn't actually include any data in it. The Power BI report in this case is actually empty until you open it and ask Power BI to, to show you what's in there. And at that point, it goes out and gets the data from Dataverse and imports it into the report. And so it's doing that at the time of visual, when you, the time of display. Um, there's some advantages to that because obviously the data is as of right now, it's like nearly real time. It's like whatever I, when I open the data, when I open the report, it goes and asks for data and it gets the data as it exists at that moment. Um, it also is pulling across based on the security of that data. So if I open it up and I'm allowed to see only my opportunities, the report's only going to be filled in with the opportunities that I'm allowed to see based on Dataverse security rules. It doesn't have separate security there. It has it just uses Dataverse's security rules. If I have permission to see um, mine and my team's da data, that's what's going to show up in the report. So that's it 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 a it doesn't have a separate security model. It uses data versus security model in that case. Now, because of that, because it's only running this at the moment you open it, the moment you open it, it's actually blank. And it's starting to run those report those queries and starting to fill out that report. There's a there's an inherent lag because the moment you open it, there's it doesn't know you're about to open the report. It has to know that you've opened the report and it, then it goes and gets the data for you. Um, so there's an inherent lag in that. So it's, it's not as fast as some other options, but it does bring that, uh, that, that strength of the uh, security model and the near real timeness of it. So it's, it's best for like the 5,000, 5k records, you know, and pretty straightforward data. Another approach is Power BI actually includes part of Power BI. It's kind of under the covers. You really, you don't really think about it at first, but it has this data engine that's built into it, the Vertipak engine. It's designed for really, really fast analytics transaction, analytics of reporting off of it. And so Power BI, instead of going to Dataverse, we can take and say, let's bring data from Dataverse into this, this engine in Power BI and have it ready so that when I open up the report, bang, the data is all there right then. And it's very, very quick and fast and visual. That's the import mode. Um, very, very fast, very responsiveness. The responsiveness is great. Uh, we can move the data over from Dataverse. Um, uh, it was up until recently, there was, a, there was a limitation of about 80 megabytes. Uh, but that is in the process of rolling out a change to that, and it will no longer be bound by the 80 megabytes. It's bound by the 10 minutes of query time. Um, so if you, if you, of course, if you've got a 10 minute query, you've got another, we've got more problems than that, but it will allow you to like schedule refreshes and load the data. So the data is being moved from here over into this, um, uh, this data set here. Um, uh, oops, let me go back to it. Yeah. It's moving the data over here from here. And then once I open the report, it's just right here and it just goes right into my report. So it's a very fast way of visualizing stuff and getting very, very snappy, fast responsiveness. Um, even you can do incremental refreshes over time. And to your question, Halima, about the uh, uh, RLS, at that point, the once I've pulled the data out of Dataverse, the Dataverse security stays in Dataverse, and I would, if I needed to uh, apply security, I could apply Power BI RLS here and make that uh, that usable. In fact, I actually did a video on that approach about two weeks ago of, of the ideas of what are the approaches of, of security, of securing the data from Dataverse into Power BI. But let's go forward one more step, and we'll talk about Azure Synapse Analytics. This is an approach that says, okay, we're past a, a data sets that are, you know, we're, we're in the two or three million record data sets, very big or complex data sets that we want to offload the responsibility for combining that data, as well as we might want to combine that data uh, with data out from outside of Dataverse and maybe want to combine it, run it through some machine learning and enrich it somehow. 
moving it out through Synapse Analytics allows us to bring the data from Dataverse out into the Azure Data Lake. And it's a continual real time, it's a continual process of pushing those changes out into the data lake. And then from the data lake, I can put a Synapse Analytics in front of it. And that gives me a, a an easy ability to query that for uh, with SQL, and then I can bring it into data, to Power BI and make it available. Very very high. This is really the um, the approach I recommend for organizations that have lots of data. If you got a lot of data, if you're trying to report on bigger bigger and bigger tables, Synapse Analytics will be your friend because it's going to continue to scale upwards way past what you're uh, what you're currently dealing with. We're telling, you know, trillions of records really um, that will approach. This is currently, uh, the current approach right now is it moves it out into the data lake as a CSV file, but um, the next, the, the preview version is putting it out as parquet files. So even now that, even though right now the speed is, is appropriate for like batch refreshes, it actually gets much, much faster uh, with this parquet file, the choice that's coming out. So three choices, three approaches. Um, you you can sort of pick between the three and uh, choose which ones you want to use. Uh, probably uh, the biggest organizations are probably going to be using a combination of all three of those approaches uh, because of the, the because of the flexibility it gives. Um, let's see. I see a question here in the, yeah, the chat please. window. Could you please unmute yourself or not and ask your question? Or not? Yeah. He's asking, is there any way to access the virtual entities in Dataverse using Dataverse connector? Yeah. So because a virtual entity is actually outside of, I mean, the data from the virtual entity is actually outside of Dataverse, um, the approach would be, would be re recommended to say, let's go get that data from the source directly as opposed to, going from the source up through a visualized layer of that in Dataverse and then pushing it down and through that to that. The approach would be to go get the data directly from that. Uh, no, it means an extra, a little bit extra effort, but it cuts out a, a, a an intermediate link between the two. Uh, so the those entities are not available through the, the connector, uh, specifically because the best practice would be to go get it from its, uh, its original source. So cool, all right. A couple other things I point out is um, the Dataverse connector is baked into uh, Dynamics, or excuse me, into Power BI, and I can click on it and go into the Dataverse connector and connect to an entity and say, I'm going to choose the account entity. I have a choice of load or transform. I would encourage you to go to transform data because we want to minimize the size of those data queries because it will actually help us streamline the approach. Or I can write it against the Dataverse connector, the TDS piece. I can just write a SQL statement. If I'm comfortable with SQL, uh, which that's kind of my normal way of doing it, is I write a SQL statement saying, give me these columns or these these fields from a particular entity, and bring it in and show me the uh, the data that I want to, to see. So in this case, I've got a, a query that I've written and I just drop it into that pass it on and um, I can I can take it off and run. It's a native query and it pulls it in. That's a best practice because it is a very thin and targeted query result. The If I click and say, just give me everything in the entity table, uh, in the, like the everything in the um, opportunity table or everything in the account table, when I only need one or two columns from it, I'm getting, it's going to take me a lot longer to return that data to me that's unnecessary. So I try to keep them really nice and tight and thin and clean on that approach. Staying focused on the use case. One thing I will point out is if you're comfortable with Dataverse and you know the schema, the way that I, I've known the schema for 20 years, you know there's relationships on pulling relationships everywhere in that or in that environment. It's just, there's relationships everywhere. Um, and that works for Dataverse. It's 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 brilliant. It works great, but it's a terrible way to build analytics on top of things. The approach is to move into what we call a star schema, where we have what is the fact that we're trying to ask questions about right in the middle of that star, 
And then outside of the star, what are the things we want to use to slice that star by? Is it by the accounts or the products or the campaigns, et cetera? That's the fact. And these are the dimension tables. It's, um, it's a, it's a pattern that keeps repeating itself that people who are very solid and, 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 uh, experts at Dataverse will look at Dataverse and say, Dataverse has tables and columns and relationships. And they'll look in Dyna in Power BI and they'll say, oh, there's tables and columns and relationships. I'll just copy my schema from here to here. And it doesn't work very well. Um, you really want to rethink that in terms of an analytic approach. And there's some really good guidance on how to do a star schema. Minimizing query columns, uh, using the query editor, uh, taking advantage of the hints. Those are in there. I'll give you the, the documentation on this. Large blocks of text and um, dual mode. I think these are probably all fairly normal things. Uh, and then ensuring the query is folding, especially if you know my, my friend uh, Alex Powers. He wants to ensure that you help fold that query. And there is a hint that you can add to your SQL statement or just after the SQL statement that says enable folding to ensure that what's happening if I ask a question from Dataverse, or excuse me, from Power BI, that it sends the entire thing over and then Dataverse answers the question and just sends back the answer. So if I want to see, give me the count of all the opportunities that are owned by um, Scott, it's going to return a, a number saying, here's how many are owned by Scott. It's not going to return, here's all the opportunities, and you can figure out which ones are owned by Scott later. It's going to return just the answer to me. That's a much more efficient approach. Uh, you can get really large data sets moving across. Very good. All right. Talked about those. There's some resources that are out there. There's Azure Synapse Analytics resource. I do want to I want to share with you a couple of things that I have out on the on the web for you that are available. Let me go out to pull this over here. Um, if I go to my environment, let me go to. Well, here's a. I mean, everybody's got a, everybody and their, everybody and their cousin has a YouTube video, right? So I put, I got to have a handful of YouTube videos out there, but really the ones that I have out there are focused on, um, like visualizing refresh speed, security patterns, um, quick reports, solution embedding, hyperlinking. You know, when I went from a report and a hyperlink back to the, the record in dynamics, how to do that. There's just a few things in here that are very, should be very helpful to you. I'm not, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on videos, but uh, some of the things are kind of helpful to, to be able to see. Here's another one. This is a document that I've written um, that goes into um, great depth of here, here's guidance from best practices and patterns and anti-patterns of when I'm building data to come from Dataverse into Power BI. Um, Here's what that here's what that looks like. Please take advantage of this. This is an this one is spent. This is kind of the result of me having questions and challenges and figuring out the answer and going and talking to developers and saying what's going on here. Understanding that and then this is a nice um, this is kind of the summary. These are the answers. These are the these are the lessons learned if you want to call it that in some ways. Um, finally, let me go up to. Um, this report, this presentation is right here. Uh, this one right here, um, bring the Power BI into the Dataverse. And these are in my, my GitHub, if you want to grab that. There's also some other, um, there's some other presentations in there. Please grab it like security patterns. Um, I've got the security patterns demo, uh, presentation in there. Take it, take advantage of it, uh, use it for what you need. Um, just uh, it's it's there for the taking. The other one is this, the report that I showed you in the beginning of Dataverse embedded inside of Dynamics, all of that, all of that solution, as well as all the individual reports associated with it are on this other GitHub repository. And I'll drop that in the chat window as well. And this is an example of, here are my reports. These are just Power BI template files. Here are the reports, here's a solution for them, and it will go into, open them up and look at them, and you can see how I built the reports. And I built them in a way that I only used out-of-the-box entities and only out-of-the-box columns 
so that you could use them with your own environment. Now, obviously people have different fields that they're filling out. I can only make some assumptions, but take advantage of those and it, and you should be able to run it without any modifications, but then you can then take it and modify it and say, oh, I've got this other field that I track, or I don't care about campaign, or I don't care about um, manager or territory or something like that. Whatever you want to remove, you're welcome to remove that. But it's an example that should help you get a sense of what to do with that, as well as even I've got the uh, uh, the JSON query examples in here that show how to build that filter in the form that passes the GUID of the record I'm on to the fil to the report itself and filters that report. So there's some examples of those uh, in here, but that's all that should should all be useful to you. Uh, I've got them based on where I'm pulling it from TDS. I've also got another version that's based on using pulling that data from Synapse Link. Uh, if you want to, I just have the reports in that one, but that's a uh, it's another example of that type of, of of data. But it goes through. Here's the examples of how to do it. Here's the assumptions that I have within it, and then uh, here's the data model, et cetera. So hopefully that's all been very useful. I think we're kind of probably hitting the time limit here. Um, the only things other than that I would share is some of the guidance documentation that's out there. Uh, and I think I've given you links to most of that, and I'll give you the links to the, to the PowerPoint as well. Uh, those are out there. Otherwise, I'll just say thank you and say uh, I appreciate the opportunity to, to share with you. And I love, this is a, an important topic and I've seen it open the doors for me in my career. And I've seen it open the doors for other people in their career because suddenly they're not just solving an individual problem. They're bringing value to the whole organization or to the leadership of the organization. And it turns it into a, a, a solution that goes way beyond what they started with. I'll take a pause there and see if there's any other questions or ask you if this has been helpful and ask if you're, if there's anything else that would be helpful that I could share with you, uh, that can help you, um, to, to go further into this. That was great. A great uh, presentation, Scott. Thank you. Uh, could you please ask yourself, uh, uh unmute yourself instead of writing your questions, chat window, just unmute. Just say hello. I'd ask. love to hear from you. Yeah. They're attacking you and me. Fantastic. Uh, uh, actually, way, I, have, I have one question. I, I couldn't yeah. find a chance to try that other synapse links. Uh, mm -hmm. that if we use that, do we need to, how, how do we handle data synchronization? I mean, do we need to create some sort of gateway like solutions or it's just ready made? Yeah. Everything the, is. The beautiful thing is ready made. If I go back into here, it's already baked into the Power Platform. If I'm in my environment, I can go to Azure Synapse Link. And in here, all I do is go to Synapse Link and it will tell me the environments that I've set up. I've actually set up three because of my testing examples, but let me just go with the basic one here. And here's an example where I've set it up inside the uh, Power App Maker Portal. And it's gonna go look and check which tables I have. And here's the tables that are out there. And as I make a change on a record in Dataverse, in fact, you can look and see that some of these tables I've already updated today. And as I make a change to them, those changes go into a pipeline. They're fed out to the, to the data lake. And as soon as it hits the data lake, when I run a query in Synapse, it's available to me. Um, now, if I drop one, one change to a record, if I close an opportunity, it's going to hit the lake, you know, in a, in a few seconds. Um, if I, update 10,000 opportunities at, you know, one batch call, it's going to take it a little more time to get all that out to the lake. It may take a few minutes to get it all out there, but it's because it's all being queued up and pushed out, but it is, but there's not like a, you have to wait a you know, set amount of time until it refreshes it. It's con it's a continual push of the pipeline out to the lake. So it's all, it's very, uh, very helpful in that very way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if I look, I've got some out here that are POA table that's got, what is that, 5 million records in it. The activity has 3 million records in it. Um, so just a, a really useful thing to get the data out, and then you can run queries off of it. Super. Yeah, that's a great feature. Exactly. And I've also seen some features in Power BI reports that are not 
yet available in original Power BI. <laughs> it's coming in March. It's on trying NDA, sorry. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions from the audience? Please don't be shy. Your last Thank chance you. to ask a question Very to good. the most knowledgeable person regarding Dataverse, CRM. I'm, I'm I fit that that inter, I'm the uh, I'm the unicorn that likes both both <laughs> products, and I'm excited about both products. So, uh, but in the in the meantime, yeah. So happy to to be a part of it. Okay. All right. Uh, I think well, we are done. Thanks a lot for uh, thank you very for much for the invitation. Meet up, Scott. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's see, Tasha Cooler. Tasha Cooler. Okay. Thank you. Try. <laughs> All right. Have okay. a great afternoon. Cheers. Bye bye. Thank Cheers. you. Bye bye.